First at four, the first step toward justice for the seven-year-old girl shot to death inside her own home. Police still need your help. We're tracking each twist and turn in the Wayne County election drama, and we'll talk about who President Trump just invited to the White House from Michigan. Paula, this is all unprecedented. It is unprecedented. We're talking to constitutional experts who are actually saying for the first time in our nation's history, our democracy is in peril. I'll explain why. Hi, Ben. Paula, still brisk out there, but temperatures near record highs this afternoon. We'll see when things finally calm down and if we can carry some of that warmth into the weekend. It's all right now, first at four. Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, the battle for the White House is playing out in chaotic fashion right here in Wayne County. This afternoon, President Trump's attorney, Rudy Giuliani, made it clear the Trump campaign is continuing efforts to overturn election results. Giuliani has his sights set on Michigan, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and New Mexico, citing claims of fraud that are unproven to this point. Now the two Republican members of the Wayne County Canvassing Board are trying to take back their votes to certify the county's election results. Kimberly Gill has that part of the story in the newsroom now. And Kim, we're hearing the president even reach out to the board members. You're right, Karen. Good afternoon to you. The president reportedly called Republican Chairwoman Monica Palmer after Tuesday's contentious meeting. Today, we've learned the president is also reaching out to key Michigan lawmakers with an invitation to come to the White House. But let's start in Wayne County, where Palmer and Wayne County's other Republican canvasser, William Hartman, have filed paperwork to rescind their votes to certify the election results. At first, the two voted against certification at Tuesday's meeting, but then agreed to vote yes. In signed affidavits, they now say they were bullied into making that change and they regret it. After this announcement, the Trump campaign announced it would withdraw its federal lawsuit in Michigan, throwing its support behind the two board members. But Michigan's Secretary of State says there's no legal way for the two to change their votes. Democrats on the board call this move a quote unquote embarrassment. I think what they've done right now is uh, is put us in a very, very bad light as a county board of canvassers, as a community. And because of that, um, I definitely don't believe that they're ready for prime time. And I think they should give some serious thought on whether or not they want to continue to serve um, uh, in this community in those positions. Now, as this fight over votes plays out, Local 4 has learned that Republican uh, State Senate Majority Leader Mike Shirky and House Speaker Lee Chatfield are expected to visit the White House Friday. The Michigan Democratic Party is calling the trip, quote unquote, shameful. Karen, a lot to unpack here, and we'll bring you the very latest coming up on the news at 5. Until then, we'll send it back to you. All right. Thank you, Kim. Sure. And we've had close presidential elections before. Many of us can vividly remember the year 2000 with those hanging chads in Florida. But this year feels different, and some experts see reasons for concern as hyperpartisan fights seem to buck the norms of democracy we've come to expect. Paula Tutman this afternoon went looking for perspective on what we're seeing. Some experts believe that the so-called longest enduring experiment of democracy that is the United States is in peril. Here's a fact about the human condition. Governments fall. Right? No system of government lasts forever. Professor Richard Primus is a constitutional law expert at the University of Michigan. I mean, people throw sharp elbows in elections. People sometimes say things that aren't true. Uh, people, there are lots of underhanded techniques that are used. But when we get to counting the votes, and once the votes are counted, right, we have a pretty strong practice of everybody saying, okay, like the math is the math, right? If it's super close, we have a recount, right? But the math is the math, and now we move forward. The simple act of two members of the Wayne County Board of Canvassers picking and choosing which results they want to certify is deeply concerning to Professor Peter Trumbor, chair of the political science department at Oakland University. The idea that they would certify all the votes in Wayne County except those from the city of Detroit, when the problems, for example, in Livonia, uh, with uh, sort of the mismatch between the, the, the poll books and, and the final numbers were equivalent, um, that they would accept the votes from Livonia, which is 90-some percent white, 
while throwing out the votes from the city of Detroit, which is the largest majority black city in, in the country, I think tells you all you need to know. There's reporting that President Trump got involved in the Wayne County dispute himself, reaching out directly to Republican canvassers, Monica Palmer and William Hartman. To try to uh, nullify the votes of hundreds of thousands of who are supposed to be his own constituents is, is simply uh, is simply shocking. But the damage is already being done because if you can successfully get enough people to choose to believe they have been cheated or slighted and they are unwilling to recognize the winner, whether they voted for them or not, democracy is injured. This is the only time in those 200 plus years of history that we've had a president who has sought to burn the place down as he's headed out the door. I think that, that what this is showing us is that anybody's democratic rights are at risk when you have unscrupulous people in power. That really seems to be it, right? That everybody's vote is, is at risk of being taken from them and that we really need, uh, I think we really need some, some serious vigilance to make sure that it doesn't happen. And so what our experts are basically saying is for anybody who wants to continue to have a choice in leadership by way of voting, they need to get in touch with their lawmakers and demand that they uphold the sanctity of this vote so that they can vote another day. In other words, in order for democracy to live another day, for you to even vote, this is the time to make sure that the that this election is indeed certified and upheld because there's just no real evidence of, of, of fraud that is being leveled against the city of Detroit and indeed Michigan. All right. Thank you, Paula. In other news this afternoon, the Wisconsin man charged in the plot to kidnap Governor Gretchen Whitmer will not receive bond while he fights extradition to Michigan. 52-year-old Brian Higgins is accused of providing material support to the so-called Wolverine Watchmen. He is one of 14 men charged in the domestic terror plot. Higgins previously posted a $10,000 bond, but a judge ruled he is not entitled to have a bond amount set at this stage of the case. Higgins turned himself in after warrants were issued in Michigan and Wisconsin. His attorneys say they will appeal the decision. A man arrested in connection to a drive-by shooting that killed a seven-year-old girl in Detroit is now formally charged. 19-year-old Emmett Williams Jr. is facing several charges, including first-degree murder. The shooting happened last month at a home on Bedford on the city's east side. Investigators say seven-year-old Regina Williams was shot in the head while inside that home. She died from her injuries. A second suspect, 22-year-old Christian Mitchell Childress, is also facing charges but has not been arrested. Police are looking for him if you know his whereabouts. Call police. Governor Gretchen Whitmer pressuring leaders today in Washington to provide more coronavirus relief. She just offered that COVID-19 update live here on Local 4. It's one story that we're following as Michigan reports more than 7,500 new cases of the virus in the past day. The state also says an additional 134 people have died. Almost half were found in vital records review. Also today, there are published reports the U.S.-Canada border will stay closed until December 21st formal announcement expected later this week. Saturday's Michigan State game against Maryland has been canceled as the Terrapins deal with a coronavirus outbreak. Governor Whitmer is also pressuring Michigan's Republican lawmakers to offer their ideas for fighting the virus. I am hopeful that when the legislature returns from their hunting break, Republicans will share their plans for addressing the public health emergency our state is facing. We must do everything that we can to protect each other from this virus because this virus doesn't care who you are. It, any one of us can contract COVID-19. The governor also repeated her warning that all of us should adjust our Thanksgiving plans with COVID safety in mind. We're still sorting through all the governor's comments and we'll bring you more highlights from what she had to say tonight at 5. In today's first forecast, we are seeing sunshine. It's warmer outside, also a little windy. Ben Bailey here with a quick look at what's happening. Hey, Ben. Yeah, Karen, uh, we still have that wind advisory. It's not as bad as what we had to go through over the weekend, uh, but definitely seeing those gusts over 30 miles per hour still there in Detroit and Adrian. But look at those temperatures, low in mid-60s. 
uh, falling just short of our record high, which is 68. Uh, you can see that wind advisory in effect until 5 p.m. Still have that lakeshore flood advisory for St. Clair County because of those southwest winds. Clay Township, Harsons Island still could see some minor flooding here for the next hour. And then temperatures start to slide through the 50s. It's going to be a mild night. It's going to take a while for these winds to completely die down, but we'll look at the warmth that will hang around for tomorrow, some weekend rain, and of course, take a look at your Thanksgiving Thursday all in a few minutes. All right. Thank you, Ben. Still ahead. Sometimes being popular can be a very, very bad thing. We'll talk about an open invitation to hackers you should definitely avoid. Also, we've got news from Hollywood about the long-awaited Wonder Woman sequel. Many fans will probably be glad to hear this one. Up first, new legal action surrounding the heartbreaking death of actress Naya Rivera. We'll tell you who's being targeted and why when First at War continues.